Hey guys, welcome back to the Modeling Edge. It's Nick, and I've been working on the M3 Stewart, and hopefully that video will be out soon. Now that I have a lot of time, as many of us do, in quarantine to finish these projects while I'm away from work. And this is just going to be added in to the weathering portion of that video, but I thought this was a technique that I didn't know a whole lot about when I started modeling, and I've been playing with it for a couple of years and thought, I'll just give it its own video. And it's the how-to video for oil dot filters. As you can see, this tank is already pretty aged. I was using white and green oils to just distress the paint overall and do more of a filter than a dot wash. And you'll see the difference about what I mean by that soon. Now, to do this, you'll need some oil thinner. I just use generic Mona Lisa oil thinner, very cheap. And I also use just Artist Loft oils that you can get at any craft store. There are professional oils made just for scale modeling. And from what I've seen and what I heard, they are very good. I just haven't had the chance to use any of them, but these work just as well. And hopefully I will be able to show you that. So this technique is super simple. It's exactly what it sounds like. You're just going to take some oil, put it on a palette. In this case, it's just going to be my paper plate, which I'm so fond of. Don't really need a lot of it. Most of this is going to get thinned out or diluted to the point where it's almost translucent, kind of like an acrylic filter. Uh, and the colors I'm using, because I already did the white, which is to distress and lighten panels, I'm using burnt sienna, black, and copper for the shadows and for wear and tear. I've never used a metallic oil before, so we'll see how that works. And the copper is going to be used just to add rust. But first, for our shadows, because a lot of the white oil has gotten into places where I didn't want it to be and darken things up. So for that, all you're going to do is take some thinner, which I have here, and you're just going to thin the paint out a lot. Like I said, you want it to be incredibly thin, almost translucent, before you start doing a wash with it. It should be able to run on its own before you put it on the model. And also, just quick tip, you don't want to be doing this without gloss coating the model because thinners can take off other paints. Then all I'm going to do is just start applying it. And you can see how thin it is. Into areas where there should be shadow. And right now they're white, which they should not be white. So the periscope vents on all of these hatches. And hopefully you'll see it starts picking out details a little bit. Now, if you get oil overlap, which I just did on this decal and I don't want it there, you can just rub it off with a Q-tip or a paper towel, that sort of thing. The reason oil paint is good for this is it takes incredibly long to dry, making it ideal to do these kinds of touch-ups and shadows. And it looks like I missed, or I hit some of the gun with some white, so we're just going to cover that in black oil. Hopefully restore some of that darker coloring. That's pretty much it for the shadows. Other things you're going to do with this oil are streaks, weathering and streaks. So, see here, I kind of hit the grill of this portion a lot with white paint, which should be the opposite color. So we're gonna cover the whole area in black and hopefully it'll get down into the recess. This is kind of the idea. Sorry if you can't really see that this well. And to make it run a little bit more, you can always apply more thinner. You really just want to get it into the grates. Just like that. And then here comes the dot part. From there, I'm just going to put in some streaks with oil paint. You don't want this paint to be thinned, although it can be, 
really just depends on how you want to use the technique. And just, yeah, paint down a couple of lines. This is the exhaust of the tank, so I want all the area underneath it to be kind of grimy. Just taking my black oil paint and just painting it like you would acrylics, just across the entire bottom of the vehicle. And this is where a cotton swab comes in especially handy. You want to take some thinner, but not too, too much. Let's get most of that off on a paper towel. And you're just going to streak it. And you'll notice it adds a very dark effect to the underside of this vehicle. And to lessen the effect, because it's a little too dark in some areas, you just keep dragging it all the way down with more and more thinner. And eventually, if you really wanted to, you could wipe the whole section of paint off just with your hand. So what I'm doing here is just really shortening these beads because they're a little bit too long. And there, you have nice, very dirty exhaust streaks all the way down the back of these engine panels. The same technique is used for the muzzle of the gun. To add the effect that the gun has been fired a bunch of times, just stressing the barrel. So applying oil to that. And then just taking it off. For a nice heat stressed barrel effect. Now I'm going to go into better lighting for this next section because this is where we do the precision pin washing. So bear with me while I move this stuff with better lights. Or actually, hold on. Give me a few minutes and I'll see if you can light this up. Okay, so now we're a little bit more lit up. And hopefully you can see the color change from the barrel from black to green and so forth. Or at least see the black inside the periscopes here where we did some of that. And here's what the back panel looks in better lighting. All black under there, black streaks. We're also going to apply black to this grill, which is less recessed, so hopefully You guys will be able to see how this works. And there, you just let that dry and in a few minutes I will go back over that with a Q-tip just to leave the black paint in the recesses and the green paint of the grill on top. Sorry, this is a little far away from me with the camera in front of me, so just touching it up. But there, that is how you do that. Now, for the actual dot filters, it's exactly what it sounds like, only I already did the basic ones, so these are going to be a little bit, like I said, more precise. But essentially, we're going to take some burnt sienna, because that color simulates rust, and we just apply little dots of it at the top of the vehicle. Top of bulkheads, screws, all kinds of stuff. Or, and then for the copper, we especially want the copper around the chipping. Put copper there, there, some places, just to give it like a more metallic feel. We're definitely going to put some copper on the air scrubbers here. 
We're gonna let that sit a little bit longer just because that's an effect that I wanna have a stippled, a stippled effect. So then, same thing with the Q-tip. Now that we have our little dots, we're gonna clean the brush uh, as much as possible because oil paints are really sticky. Get some thinner on it, we don't want too much. And then just like we did with the engine streaks, we're just gonna start pulling this down. We're just gonna keep going over it with thinner. Until we completely blend that color into the array of colors that already exist on the vehicle. And there is a further distressed panel on the vehicle with some rust around the edges. And this type of weathering is exclusively just for that. It's to change and soften the colors of the vehicle and make it look a little bit more dynamic before we apply further weathering in the form of dust, pigments, more painting, all that kinds of stuff. And for filters, you just apply them straight on just like this. Take them off again, dressy Q-tip. The filter is the same thing as an oil dot filter, whereas the oil dots are more for streaking specific areas. This is just applied to the whole area to change the color of that decal and the overall model just a little bit more. And so that's pretty much how you do that. So I'm going to do the rest of this tank and you guys can check out the M3 Stewart video I'm going to post later this week to see how all of this finally turned out. But thank you so much for watching. I hope this guys helps you. If you're just starting to learn how to use oil paints and using those instead of just acrylic washes, expanding your toolbox a little bit. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to the channel. It really helps support me and helps me continue to build models as much as I possibly can and bring you techniques like this for some of you new modelers. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.